Hello and welcome to day 17 of my Just Ship It challenge. And today there are a couple of things that I want to talk with you. A couple of things. So um, I thought a little bit more about yesterday. I started talking about, you know, what, what is a company and the company is not only the code that you're creating. Um, and, um, but the, the code, the IP, right, is definitely a big part of your product, but probably not so much in the beginning uh, because, well, everybody could just copy something. Like I work on it seven, 17 days. So I imagine anybody else could <laughs> work 17 days on this tool and have um, similar results, maybe better, maybe a little bit less, but sort of similar results, right? So um, over time, uh, definitely the the code becomes more and more the IP and the value of the company. Uh, but the company is so much more. And so yesterday I was talking a little bit and, you know, I'm just rambling here. <laughs> I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm just telling you, it's like a brainstorm that I'm doing here on Twitch. And so I was telling you about how I would like shift the gears. And this is also what I had planned already in the beginning, right? That I'm, I'm developing, but I'm not focusing the whole 30 days on development, but there should be something else. And this something else was definitely meant as, well, I, I don't want to develop a tool. And then after 30 days, I'm saying, ta-da, there's the tool, right? I, I don't think it, it works like this. And so, um, even though we have that in, in the grand scheme, right? So that this means also over time, we have to develop something else. So I think probably a sprint of 30 days just developing and heads down is actually okay. But I just wanted to have this uh, ship it challenge, like a, a tiny micro iteration of something bigger. Right? And so I wanted to have some elements in it already from this other perspective, whatever this other perspective means, right? And so I was thinking about the user, about the customers, talking to customers. And uh, one thing that I'm really, really lucky right now is that I have already one customer. I have already one user. Actually, right now it's a it's an early adopter. And so it's, uh, it's also not a customer in the sense that they are paying, uh, but the good thing is that um, they're giving me feedback, right? And uh, I can really interact with somebody and not just develop the tool by myself. And I told you about the demo that I gave and the verdict was actually that it's a useful tool, uh, but there came even more out of that, right? So it was as useful that the VP of the engineering from this uh, corporation uh, considers or they are considering even sponsoring, or I don't know exactly how we are going to do that, but like they, they want to pay uh, that I can develop the tool, right? And so we are going to explore that. I'm not going, I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna say this is happening, uh, but at least it's a really good sign. People are considering uh, actually paying for the product, which I think is a very, very important indicator if you want to actually create a business out of something, right? Doing something useful um, means that it provides value and it has to provide value to a point that people are actually wanting to pay for it, right? So this is, I think for this early 17 days, I think this is a very good, a very good sign. Um, but there's something more. So there was this user aspect that I was thinking about, like how should I involve the user and uh, in, in the very, in the first two days, three days, right? I was thinking, well, random people, right? <laughs> like that, that, that I obviously wanted to go get close to my target audience, but I wasn't expecting that I will find them in the, the first 30 days. Um, so this is actually a, a big step that I'm already there. Uh, but there's, there, there are other aspects of, of a company as well. And so one of the other aspects that I was talking about yesterday was like, well, creating a landing page and, um, you know, understanding a little bit more how to describe the product. And I still think landing page is really important that I should do it sooner than later because people can just, you know, if they stumble across um, whatever I'm doing or promoting or telling or sharing, and they don't have any place to go to sign up to so say that they're interested. That's not good, right? That's that are that are lost uh, users, lost customers, lost uh, potential people that I can just talk about the tool that are interested, right? So this would be a big loss. So I actually think that I really should do the the landing page and just some simple 
place where people can sign up very, very soon. But then I was also thinking about defining a little bit more what the tool is about and, you know, making a better description of it, thinking more about the features that should be in there or not in there. Hi, Rich. Nice that you're joining again. And I want to change plans here. I don't want to do that. Um, I was thinking a little bit more about this today. What would it mean, you know, for me to describe the, the, the product, right? The product that I'm 17 days in building. And I think the other part is exactly the opposite that I should do. I should not shout out, you know, this is my tool. This is what it's doing because this is all coming from me and maybe a little bit from the early adopter. I should ask, I should listen, right? So uh, yesterday I was talking about that a company is not the code, but also the network. So the network is important. So today I'm thinking, uh, instead of writing down what this tool is about and maybe making some promo, I don't know, description of it or some videos of, of the tool or, or whatnot, I should more listen, like get in contact with people, try to find more people that are interested in something like that, listen what their, their pain points are and, and, and reach out. And also yesterday I was talking about that I want to have more people in my my life that actually are also pursuing doing a, a software product, a SaaS business, or, you know, having a service business, something like that, just the entrepreneurial side of it. And so I want to do that. And, and I think I should, I should put a little bit time into that. And maybe it's even better for me to, you know, like let's say I'm allocating two hours per week instead of writing about what my tool can do in this very moment, I should probably use those two hours to reach out to other folks and see if I can connect with other people. And, and, and the same for potential users, customers, understanding what people are really, what they really need. Right. So this is, um, I think, a big mind shift from from yesterday to today. <laughs> and yeah, I, I feel very good about it. I think in this first 30 days, so I'm, I'm going to focus on doing the product. I will focus doing the product a little bit more because I have this uh, early adopter and uh, they are interested in the tool. So they want to see something and they have already a couple of features. We have to prioritize what they actually would like to see. So. Uh, there will be more uh, development than I actually thought there will be. Uh, there will be less marketing, less promoting uh, of the tool happening. I think there will be a lot of listening happening. Um, I want to see what people you know, have to say, the problems that they are seeing. And um, yeah, definitely there should be a landing page, as I said, something that people can you know, have a place to go. And yeah, and, and I, I was actually brainstorming. So... I told you yesterday that, that I'm a part of Founders Club, which I really like. So I had like one meeting uh, yet and I have um, another meeting scheduled for next week. So that's really cool. It's especially cool because another person is organizing those events. So I don't have to do much about the organization. I just have to find the time and be there and talk to the other founder. So that's really cool. Uh, but um, probably since two years, I'm thinking about doing my own little community. And I also talked about yesterday, how I really have a problem in these really large communities. I feel very lost in there. I don't feel like I belong or I feel like I'm missing out. <laughs> I feel like I don't know the names. Um, and, and so I was thinking, why not create my really small little space, my really small little community. Um, and it has to be low maintenance, obviously, right? So I was thinking maybe once a month, Meetup, meetup stylish thing. I really want to see people. I want to, you know, talk with them face to face and uh, get to know them. Don't have to be like, if there is one person joining me once a month, I think that would be already a very successful thing. If there are two or three people, I think that would be like the optimal number. If they're like 10, that's probably too much. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I'm thinking of really doing that. Uh, I don't, I'm not gonna do it in October cannot do everything uh, in one month, uh, but maybe I'm starting in November to do that. And then I will have like a scheduled day, like one day. And that's my, my hustle up with Michaela day or something like that. Right? So that I'm creating a community that's small enough that I can really be part of. 
actually I talked uh, I think there was a podcast recently on what ah uh, landing it no which podcast was it oh ah uh, it was the podcast my podcast it was this uh, software engineering unlocked podcast and I was talking with Emma Boschen and uh, we talked about because she is um, traveling around the world and living in uh, many places different uh, places around uh, continents even right she's American and now living in Europe and so we were comparing a little bit our um, experiences about that because I also lived in many places I lived in the US in Canada in the UK in the Netherlands in Germany in Austria right so many many places um, and one of the things that I struggled with a lot is that I lost my friends all the time and I think the reason behind is that I take quite some time to make friends. Like I have a lot of people that I know and especially if you're like at student times and things like that where you got out a lot. I had a lot of people that I know but I feel it takes me quite some time to really have a very deep connection to another person and so um, probably a year. <laughs> and so when I'm when I'm moving again, I somehow really lose these connections and I, I'm really sad about that. And again, it takes me a long time to, to make new connections. And I think this is very related to those community where there are so, so many people and, um, you know, just you know, sharing a few sentences and a few messages back and forth in this public channel is not doesn't really make me feel like we know each other or, you know, we have a very strong relationship. And so I think that maybe this could really help. And it's not, now you think, well, why I'm talking about this, it's not directly related to the, the Ship It Challenge, but I think it is related. I think having, you know, your, your support network, your network, your people that actually talk with you and that um, also can, you can learn from each other, right? I definitely have a, Quite some experience in some places and other people have more experience in others and so we can share and I think uh, this will be very beneficial for for my journey in general right maybe not for this product but for any product in general so I uh, talked a lot about those things so maybe what I wanted to show you is a quick very quick look at my uh, product but now I have to actually change the data behind sorry <laughs> because this is the data from the company that I'm working with and this is confidential so let's uh, change I have to run it again I, I'm gonna quickly change um, this here and then maybe show you something we put an Apache and then the CouchDB because this is one that I'm working on quite a bit um, and let's, let's run the tool to generate the report Apache couch DP something like that. Oh, it's not there because there's um, one second. I have to spell it correctly. Then let's run it all. Okay, it's done. Okay, and I'm quickly showing you the tool if you're interested in that. Let me see. It's running on localhost, obviously. Um, so, and there it is, right? So this is the Apache CouchDB and it's some participation overview. You see how many of the, the reviewers, how many, what's the percentage of reviews that are happening here, right? So it's 82% of the things are actually reviewed. 30% have actually no comments, right? There's the approval rates how many changes are happening, merge rates, and, and uh, right, so um, comments, well, this is an outlier, I have to in, uh, have a look what, what's happening here. And um, yeah, and there are also, this is something that I'm working right now on, this is really a, a very um, in-depth classification of different kinds of PRs. Um, and so I also try to categorize them with like, this is, I mean, this is really like debugging here and uh, development, right? But I try to give them some severity, like here it's green and there is red, right? There are none because they haven't been, I haven't really figured out how I should uh, classify them, but obviously it should be orange, right? Or I'm not sure if I should have a yellow in there as well, something like that, I'm exploring, right? And so there's some characteristics of those different uh, PRs and I want to make a nice visualization also here. I mean, this is really 
it's not the, the nice visualization. But look at that, made with love by Michaela Reiner. Um, I was really hoping that I can, can write that down at one of my uh, products. So, um, yeah, not too much to see. There are actually other views as well. I showed you this with the, with the um, time and things like that. But uh, yeah, this is not, this is not um, happening. Something else I wanted to show you, which I'm really excited about, and it's not super related, but it's cool, um, is my SE Unlocked podcast transcripts. Uh, because I think here I'm the first time like an open source maintainer a little bit like I'm I'm doing a lot of uh, pull requests and merge requests like there are 39 different um, merge requests that I just received within the last 17 days because of this uh, Hacktober thing which is really cool so people are looking for uh, contributions that they can do and I think it's a really fun thing to do that here as well because People listen to the episodes, to the podcast episodes, and then they can, um, if they want, they can improve parts or the whole transcript um, that I'm providing here. And uh, I think right now, almost half of all my transcripts have already gotten some improvements. And I think this is, yeah, this is really nice. Uh, I feel really good about this. And um, yeah, something else that I wanted to show you. I'm actually, I just started using GitHub a little bit. Uh, everything else was always private for me and I was using different tools as well. But I'm I'm working now more also in this open source space and I did it like, this one is nice as well, all about code reviews. So I'm having like one place where I write everything about code reviews. And um, so it's like, because over the years, right, I read so much, I heard so much, but somehow I, lost a lot of the links or you know resources or i have them in my own notes and so now i'm providing that actually publicly so people can read right these are like uh, company insights what people are doing like companies bigger companies facebook google microsoft netlify palantir quora and so what they're doing right in the code review space code review articles as well um i mean i have much more i I do it slowly. I have a long list that I have to, you know, sort in to this thing. Um, and then what a, a new thing that I started is interesting Twitter discussions. Uh, so whenever I see an interesting Twitter discussions where there are a lot of conversations and uh, discussions, I actually make a, a, yeah, an entry here. I mean, this would actually be sorted. So I'm starting out, right? Don't, don't I don't want to overdo it. But um, in general, I, I found this. Um, I really like it. Yeah, and so. I started to do that process with many things. Like this is all about code reviews, uh, but I started creating different um, things. Like I'm also learning now D3, right? You know that I I chose D3 for my uh, front end, and um, yeah, I haven't really worked with it, at least not in the last nine years. Um, and so, yeah, there I have like a little learning D3 resource. I mean, it's really at the beginning, but I, I like it because I can come back to it and I can see, you know, there are some of the examples that I found interesting and, you know, I also give them some versions. So things that worked well for me or that I understood uh, quite well. Um, now I'm linking here. So yeah, this is my new, new way of working a little bit more shared and a little bit like, I really like it because all these um, resources, I mean, that I have on my computer, they are just for myself, right? And then they got for get forgotten. And I'm not saying that a lot of people um, use it right now, but here you see 21 people at least found it useful, somehow useful that they gave a star, didn't ask them to. And the same here, like for my code review checklist, for example, I also put that now online, uh, which is nice because people seem to um, to like it and maybe they are using it, which I think is a good, is a good sign. Yeah. So that's it for today. That's it for today. I'm, I'm thinking if I wanted to talk with you about something else. Um, ah, yeah, maybe one last thing that uh, came to my mind is uh, when I was also talking about, you know, I want maybe some mentors. So there's this idea of network, of, of creating my own community, maybe a, a few people that I can connect very uh, closely. Uh, but what I also do, uh, do since uh, many years is, I'm reading a lot, right? I'm listening to podcasts. So I'm consuming 
resources that are that are available um, so that you don't have to know the person per se. And I came across a blog post, a really interesting one, actually from Rand Fish. Um, um, what was it called? I don't know if I if I will find it uh, very quickly, but it was about um, how he actually left now Moss as uh, of, he was on the board of directors and he now left and that the whole last years were quite dreadful because there were some mismatches between him and actually his best friend before. But, you know, it, it's it's a story. But what I really found so refreshing is that he was so honest, brutally honest, right? I mean, he didn't he didn't wash his laundry really in public. So we don't know what these um, conflicts were about, but we knew or from from the from the text you could grasp it was a very deep conflict and a severe conflict and i mean they had lawyers they they, they first were best friends sort of right uh, on on each other's weddings and looking after their kids and things like that and then uh, after this conflict that are that weren't they weren't able to overcome them they didn't even talk to each other anymore they had to have communications via lawyers and mediators and now they, for years they have actually been both on the board of directors and now he um, he left and he said well you know at one point you you just have to see that toxic is toxic or something like that right so but i was there's the story on one hand which um, I find like a very cautious tale because I'm always also thinking, oh, maybe I should, you know, get a co-founder and, and something. So there's this cautious tale about this. But the real impressiveness for me was that he was sharing something. So at least it, it, it felt really, really honest. And I clicked a little bit through his um, blogs and uh, I see the same openness, transparency and honesty. I mean, only to a certain degree, which is OK. Uh, in, in quite a few of his blog posts, right? He was talking about his depression and it's also when you talk, when you see how he talks about Moss and how he talks about how he worked or what he did, it was not all roses and, you know, flowers and roses and uh, sunshine uh, and he did everything uh, well, but he was also pointing out his mistakes. And this really resonates with me because um, yeah, I don't like this fake, everything is perfect, right, uh, world. I want reality somehow. And it, I think it's hard to get from people from the internet. Well, long story short, he has a book. So this is the next thing that I want to read. And it's called Lost and Founder or something like that. Uh, and so this is the book I already uh, told Robert uh, that if someone, you know, if he wants to make me a present, that, that would be a good present. <laughs> uh, because there's actually um, my... Uh, my wedding, wedding day, wedding anniversary coming up. So maybe, maybe I will get that very soon. And then I will go and read that book. And I only looked at the Amazon uh, reviews and they were really good. And then one was like, um, that he's telling so much about, you know, what he really learned that you can learn from it. So maybe that's exactly what I was looking for yesterday. Like, um, more resources where I can, you know, learn a l little bit about how to approach things if you're in this startup world. I mean, he raised money, which I don't want to do per se right now. Um, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to to read quite a bit. Rich, do you know uh, Randfish? How is it really called? He's called... Uh, maybe I, I, I hate it if I pronounce the the name's wrong, right? Um, Rand Fishking Kins. Rand Fishking. Yeah. So, and on Twitter, he is Randfish or something. That's why I call him <laughs> Randfish. <laughs> yeah, Randfish. But his real name, sorry, is Rand Fishking. He's like the, the he was the founder of Moss and Moss is this big SEO thing. It was first, I think it was a website with, with, with a bit of information about how to do SEO and consultancy and things like that. And then they uh, built the product company out of it. And he was doing it with his 
mother, right? So he started the business with his mother together and then, you know, it grew into this large thing uh, with board of directors. And I think they got uh, 30 million, they got several seats, but the, the second round was 30 million or something like that. So quite some money. And, uh, and after they got this money, they actually had really big problems to keep the growth because they had really high growth first. And, and then they couldn't keep up with this growth. And if you can't keep up with you no know, 20, 25% growth, uh, on a steady pace, right. Then you're somehow screwed in this, um, in this investment or in this, uh, seat VC seeding money world. And, um, yeah. And so then later on, they, they struggled quite a bit and yeah. So yeah, I really like this transparency. Also, he was talking about that, right? Like how they struggled and how how this how on one hand this uh, taking on this VC money was really good, but on the other hand, it put him into a very difficult position. And I heard that so often. I mean, the guy from Gumroad, for example, had the same thing, right? Where uh, Gumroad was like exploding. It was so um, it was growing so fast. Uh, but because they took on the the funding, the funding money, they had to have like even more growth, and uh, and actually faced bankruptcy uh, in in the middle of their story. And and he also had a really like an interesting blog post. I don't think he, it was as transparent and as honest. Um, honest, honest is the the wrong word, but. Um, I think it, there was obviously a little bit more story around it, right? Uh, when I read it, it was like, like he, he kept saying that he, he was, um, losing and that he wasn't winning and that, you know, um, he was on the wrong path, but somehow, you know, it, the underlying message was like, oh, I'm still a winner. And then, but it was a very interesting read as well. Great read. And I think a very interesting person, um, but anyway, so he was also on this, you know, VC funded path and then he couldn't keep, keep up with the growth that was expected. And so he, he had to lay off all his staff and he had quite a bit of staff at that point. He had to lay off all his staff and then he actually bought his, his company back uh, for no money at all because uh, people were just, you know, it was, it was that and he didn't work. And still the company was growing, right? And so it was growing with a steady pace, but not with a pace that, um, yeah, is VC worthy, something like that. And so this is also a very interesting read. Yeah. Anyway, I'm, I'm actually too long on this uh, stream already. So 30 minutes. So with those closing words about, um, that, so if you know some cool books about founder stories, or, you know, where you can really learn a little bit. Uh, but I'm looking more for really personal stories rather than like textbooks. I have quite a, a few textbooks behind me about a startup. Uh, so I'm, I'm really looking more for, for stories of people, how they did their very unique thing and uh, their unique learnings, which I understand that you cannot generalize from them, but at least if you are reading enough of those stories i think you can you can can generalize for yourself and don't have to rely on the generalization that are coming out of a of a textbook anyway that's uh what i wanted to talk with you about thank you so much for joining in again today and um, being part of my journey we are over half of our streams and uh, yeah see you tomorrow 9 p.m cst bye bye